Hey, my name is Eric, and you're watching the Venom Vlog. Venom's not here today, man. Welcome, boils and ghouls, to the Carnage Vlog. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the Summer of Carnage right here on the Venom Vlog. But today, it is not a Carnage episode, but it will be a Venom episode. I'm here at D23, walking up now. And I'm in Anaheim, California. I drove down here this morning, and we're gonna go in and we're gonna check it out, check out the floor, and hopefully score some interviews from the new upcoming Maximum Venom cartoon. I'm out of breath because I've been walking a lot, uh, but uh, I'm gonna get inside. We're gonna get this thing started. So here we go. In today's episode, we're gonna try something a little different on the Venom vlog here. Uh, I'm actually gonna talk about uh, the panel and what I saw there because the whole reason I went down, like you'll see some footage on screen of like the the floor, the show floor, and everything. Um, I went down there and. and partaked in some of that and uh, had some fun and everything and picked up like a couple little Funko Pops and you know I had a good time but mostly I just took this whole trip I drove down from LA so it was only like a hour drive you know with a little bit of traffic and uh, I just went down there to check out this panel from Marvel it was a Marvel animation spider-man panel for the new maximum venom cartoon and a lot of you guys who follow me on social media know about that and who are subscribed you know I've been talking about it for a little bit as we were building up to it and I just wanted to do something cool for my 400th episode and I thought you know I haven't really covered a panel and I haven't really driven anywhere really for the show I mean I've gone to like comic-con stuff but uh, those were things I did I was gonna do anyway this time I was like you know I, I had no interest to go to d23 until I saw this panel and I said you know I gotta go I mean you know they're, they're gonna talk about venom there I gotta be there and I'm very excited about an entire season of a cartoon for Spider-Man that is focused on Venom. I really, really love that, and it intrigued me. So uh, when I went down there, you know, I had some fun on the floor and everything, and I went to the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. panel, and I got to watch the first episode of the final season, and I had a blast, but really, the whole crux of this, the whole point of going was for this one panel for Marvel Animation Spider-Man Maximum Venom, and the panelists were great. We had Court Lane, who's the Marvel Animation and Family Entertainment Senior VP. We had Kevin Burke and Chris Doc Wyatt, uh, who are the writers and producers and they were the guys who I was like uh, at least Chris I was like you know following him on Twitter and he follows me and he was I wrote him I said hey I'd love to come down and interview guys and they were like hey our schedules are kind of busy we're not sure if we can do interviews but um, you know you should definitely come to the panel if you're coming and uh, when I got down there I started getting nervous because as you guys know I have anxiety issues and I have a lot of other health issues that I go through and my head was killing me by the time the panel started my head was ready to split open I was I was really feeling the mode as they say on young uh, on young justice but uh, uh, I had a, I had a tough time and, and and so I wasn't sure I was going to ask a question and I said you know what screw it there wasn't you know there was a couple questions being asked and I said I gotta ask one like I came all the way down here I gotta at least ask one and the cool thing was is that four people on the panel were able to answer you know give me like some answer of to what they thought of Eddie Brock and I thought wow what a great answer from these guys you know they they couldn't answer my question and we'll get to my question here in a little bit but they couldn't answer my question because it might involve spoilers in the story but uh, they did answer with kind of like their version of eddie brock or like what they see in eddie brock since i opened up about what i like about eddie brock so they kind of gave me their version and it was it was perfect i thought it was great so uh, the panel had court lane there um, Kevin Burke and Chris Wyatt, like I said, Catherine Kavari, who's the voice of Kamala Khan on uh, a lot of the, you know, the Disney XD cartoons that they do and the Marvel Rising and stuff. Uh, and she was great. Uh, ben Pronsky, who was the voice of Eddie Brock and Venom on uh, the season two of Marvel Spider-Man and also coming up uh, for Maximum Venom as well. Uh, and then we have Mae Cat, who showed up uh, and she is the writer of Marvel Rising Battle of the Bands, which they showed that episode. And I actually, she converted me because the episode was really fun. It had Spider-Gwen in it and it had the Thunderbolts, like a version of the Thunderbolts, and I don't want to say too much more of that. I don't want to spoil it, uh, but we'll talk a little bit about that. So the panel started off, and it showed us Marvel Superheroes Adventures, which is like a little short film they did with Iron Spider and Iron Man, and they were kind of like fighting an asteroid. And the message of it was like try new things, and it was basically Spider-Man coming across these kids in a park, and he was like, hey, you know, the kid was too nervous to try skateboarding, and Spider-Man's like, ah, oh, try it out. Sometimes it's good to try new things, and the kid does, and he ends up, you know, kind of being a natural at it, and he's like, yeah, see, that's what comes from, you know, being a, you know, being being able to try new things so I kind of like that I was like oh, it's a cool little cute message for for kids and stuff so that was kind of fun and then they showed us um, a clip from the the season two of Marvel spider-man which they're right now they're dealing with superior spider-man and so they showed a scene where Doc Ock and it's just like in the comics Doc Ock is kind of inside Peter Parker's mind and Peter Parker we don't know where he is right now in the show we don't know where his consciousness went um, but you know Doc Ock has taken over and it was cool because what they said was that Robbie Damon who does the voice of Peter Parker on the show he actually still played 
Peter Parker, like the voice of Spider-Man, uh, because they were like, yeah, when you read the comics, you kind of think maybe Doc Ock's voice is coming out of Peter's mouth, or you're not really sure how that works. Um, so what they did in the show was they had uh, Scott Menville, who does the voice of Doc Ock, they had him do like the monologue, like internal monologue. So anytime you hear Spider-Man thinking, you hear Doc Ock's voice. But anytime he's speaking, it's Robbie Damon, who does Peter Parker's voice, but he's just doing it, and he's like, you know, getting... Um, kind of like the nuances of how Doc Ock speaks. Uh, he's kind of getting his speech pattern down and, and kind of like the way he speaks. Uh, he's kind of doing his version of that. And I was like, that's pretty cool. It's very clever and it's it's neat to see that much thought put into something that might seem so small to people, but it's very integral to the acting and performances of these characters. Um, so I thought that was cool. And then so we saw the scene where Spider-Man or Superior Spider-Man uh, with Doc Ock's consciousness, obviously, fighting Iron Man, Black Widow, and Miss Marvel. And it was a really cool scene. Um, so that show, I think the, the superhero short, that's coming up soon. Um, I didn't get a release date for that one, but Superior uh, Spider-Man cartoon show comes back on September 8th, and they're going to finish out season two, and that'll hopefully have some breadcrumbs leading into season three next spring, which will be Maximum Venom. So make sure you stay tuned starting September 8th, and be on the lookout for Disney XD when Spider-Man comes back, so you can see any if we get any more Eddie Brock episodes, or any more hints leading up to Maximum Venom. So uh, yeah, and I'll definitely review those episodes when they air for sure. Um, then we also got to see Marvel Rising Battle of the Bands. Uh, like I said, uh, May Cat came out and introduced it. They showed us the full episode, which will be on Marvel HQ's YouTube channel on August 28th, which is just two days from now on Wednesday. And uh, I, I actually really liked it. I mean, there's some characters in here that, you know, I'm an old school comic reader. So a lot of the new characters I'm not very exposed to. Like, I follow the guys I like. Like, I love Venom. I love Green Lantern. Um, you know, and so, like, I love Storm from the X-Men. I love the X-Men stuff. So I kind of follow characters that I like. And I, I haven't really checked out a lot of these new characters. So like Squirrel Girl, I, re, I know of her because I play like the Marvel, you know, Future Fight game. But I don't really know the character. And, you know, and there was other characters like uh, um, America Chavez. Um, I don't know that character. I, and then I watched the show and it has those characters in. I think Patriot, like a version of Patriots on the show as well from uh, Young Avengers, who I, I love uh, Young Avengers. That's a great book. Um, but again, that's like from like 20 years ago now or almost or 18 years ago. So. Yeah, so I'm not, like, up to date on a lot of these new characters. And Ironheart, I think, was her name. So um, it was neat because you had, uh, you know, Spider-Gwen feeling like she's letting all of her friends and family down. And so what she does is she, you know, uh, enters this Battle of the Bands contest with her friends and she, you know, and to try to prove that she, you know, doesn't want to let them down. But then she's also letting down her superhero friends. And then eventually she learns a lesson about, you know, um, you know, balancing her life out and stuff. So it's a pretty basic message, but it was t told in a very fun way. And it, like I said, it comes out on Marvel HQ on YouTube on August 28th. So it's free to watch. So I'd say definitely check it out. Um, you know, we talked about Marvel HQ before, but I'll still put a link to their YouTube channel down below so make sure you go and subscribe and check out all the fun cartoons they put up there because we do get some venom and symbiote stuff on there from time to time as well and uh, it's always fun to see different iterations of these characters um, but the battle bands one was great because they actually showed uh, some uh, members of the uh, thunderbolts which is one of my favorite marvel teams uh, from the 90s especially in the 90s uh, next to the midnight suns like i love both of those teams so much so uh yeah the thunderbolts it was cool you got to see a version of them and it was fantastic so uh, check that out and then they also gave us a hint at the end for Spidey and his amazing friends, which is going to be a new preschool show. And uh, that'll be for Disney Junior in two, uh, the year 2021. It'll come out on Disney Junior. It'll focus on Miles, Gwen, and Peter Parker. And it's very much for kids, like for little kids. Uh, I think they're going to do like math problems and stuff like that in it or something. So uh, yeah, if you're a hardcore fan, you know, people my age or, or whatever, unless you have kids, you're probably not going to be interested in the show, but it does look very fun. And I, I actually thought the art style looked very fun in it. Um, and especially Miles's suit. I think Court Lane uh, commented on how much he loved that suit and I, I agree I thought the suit design for Miles was was really nice um, so anyway all that aside that's kind of the other stuff they talked about the panel the main thing they talked about the panel is Maximum Venom obviously that's what I went down there for so I have some quotes here uh, so I was like you know listening um, you know and I did record some of the audio none, none of the visuals because they didn't allow it there but I just recorded the audio because I didn't want to screw any of this up I mean this is one of the first times I've done something like this and I really didn't want to misquote anybody or screw anything up because uh, you know I'd like to build a relationship 
relationship with these people because I'm excited for this show and I definitely want to review every episode and I want to learn as much about it as I can and I want to share that information with you guys as long as it's permitted and I'm not, you know, like, you know, sharing stuff I shouldn't be. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm playing it very close to the vest here. So, you know, I did uh, message these guys, uh, Kevin and, and uh, Chris, and I was asking them, like, hey, can I do this? Can I do that? And uh, they helped me kind of shape this episode. So I really appreciate the help and the input that you guys gave me if you're listening. And uh, and let's get into Maximum Venom because there's so much to cover here. I mean, I'm so very excited for this. It's 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 the nerd in me for Venom is great. And it's so much content coming to this channel. I mean, think about it. Next season, when we start season four of this show uh, with episode 451, we're going to dive into the Flash Thompson stuff. And while we're diving into that, which there's plenty of comic book material there, uh, we're also going to be uh, diving into and reviewing this show and we're going to be getting movie news and trailers consistently by this point. So we are going to, I'm going to have to quit my day job just to do this show. So I'll do my best to keep up with everything, but you can rest assured I'm going to review all these episodes. So uh, Courtland came out and he mentioned that actually this, I thought was a neat thing. He mentioned that Venom, the character globally from a consumer products perspective is uh, one of, if not the most popular villain. Uh, on the planet, which I thought was awesome. So I guess merchandising wise, uh, consumer product wise, he sells everywhere, which explains the movie doing so well too. Uh, and that's what I, that's why when people ask me like, why did you start a Venom show? And I go, dude, Venom's popular. Like you may not believe it. You may not think it. You may not think there's enough material for this character to talk about for four or five or six or 700 episodes, however many episodes we go, but there are, I mean, this, there is a lot to this character and there's a lot of appeal to him. And a lot of people really, really like him, especially in this generation, almost everyone grew up with a version of him. And so, uh, you know, so that's right there. I mean, like he's, he's definitely a character that the last 30 years of comic readers and movie watchers can kind of get behind and understand and, and wrap their head around because he's very simple. He's evil Spider-Man to most people. Uh, you know, and, and I'm not trying to oversimplify Venom, but that's, you know, to the, the masses, that's who he is. And so they can understand that concept and that's why they buy into it. So I love it. I loved hearing that. That made me feel really good. Uh, and it just reinforced, you know, why I do this show. I'm like, yeah, because Venom's great. And there's something about him for everybody. I really believe that. Um, so then Ben, uh, like I said, the, the panelists, uh, we had Ben uh, who came out of uh, Pronsky, who was uh, the voice of Venom. And he says, playing Venom is a lot of pressure, but also an honor. Working with Robbie Damon, uh, Fred uh, Tadasior, and uh, Laura Bailey was a blast. And so and I love when hearing actors talk about that. I mean, it is a, a business and these guys do have a job and they got to, you know, work their job and they got to go to their job every day and hearing that they went in and he's like, one of his favorite things about playing the character wasn't just, you know, doing the voice and, and the honor of it that, you know, he, he was like, yeah, this is a, a, you know, one of the number one characters in the world, uh, you know, and especially from a consumer product standpoint. So, uh, there's pressure there and there's also the fandom. So there's even more pressure with that too, uh, that those fans, you know, they, they ex have, their own expectations so it's giving them maybe something they want but also doing your own thing at the same time and uh, so I love hearing people talk about that's not a quote from him that's just me like you know kind of uh, you know speaking of my perspective of it and what he was saying but uh, him saying how much fun he had with his co-workers is great and there is a lot of talent in there like Robbie and Fred and Laura and all the other wonderful people that have been on the show and I have been catching up on this show I've been watching it leading up to the week you know going down to the you know the panel because I wanted to make sure because a lot of you guys know that that I've, I've been behind on some of the cartoons over the past few years because we've been reviewing the comics and the movie and everything. So, uh, you know, now I'm getting into the cartoon stuff and it's been really fun to kind of explore these different versions of symbiotes and Venom uh, all at the same time. Um, but then uh, Ben says that the challenge, though, of playing Venom definitely comes from the vocal side, trying to do the voice of Venom, which he did demonstrate at the panel. It was a lot of fun. He did a couple lines there, and then he did a little thing at the beginning, too. It was really funny. Um, but, yeah, he he really rocks it, man. I hope to you know get to interview him one day about this show closer to when the show comes out, and I'd love to get an intro from him. You know, I know that's, like, pretty standard. You see a voice actor or something, you're like, oh, can you do a voice for me? Um, so I don't want to, like, push that, you know, and, like, overstep my bounds, but... Um, you know, I thought he was, did a tremendous job, and I can't wait to get to the Eddie Brock episodes and hear his Eddie Brock, because uh, that's the character I really care about uh, mostly, but I do love, obviously, the combination of Eddie and, and Venom. Um, Kevin did. Kevin Burke came out and said that uh, Maximum Venom is not your standard Spider-Man season. Uh, even from the concept of doing a Venom-centric season, it begged for everything to be bigger. So this is not a 26 episode season, uh, which was one of my questions. If I got a chance to interview these guys, I was going to ask them how many episodes are this season. Well, they revealed it's not 26 
you know, 20 minute episodes or 22 minute episodes. Uh, they're not doing that this year. What they're doing instead is six one hour movie specials. Um, and that blew my mind hearing that. And everyone in the audience gasped. Like everyone around me was like, what? Huh? <laughs> like, what? And they said, and they basically reiterated, they're like, look, this is six one hour animated films, basically. That's what you're going to get. They're going to be movie specials. Uh, the you know the release date and all that stuff. They're, they're going to get to that eventually and and let us know all that stuff. But right now they wanted to get that information out there that you're going to watch six one hour movies. So that means I get to do six really awesome in depth discussions of these. I'll do re like short review episodes and then I'll probably do like my typical discussions. And then what I may even do is do what we did with the movie trailers, where in my videos I'll have you guys comment your reviews of the movie. And then I'll make a, a third episode for each one of these and I will read your comments and your reviews of the movie and then I'll have like a back and forth with your comments. Uh, so we did those and those were a lot of fun when we did the trailer reactions about Venom. So, you know, for the movie. So I think we should do that for these two. I think that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, then Chris adds, uh, the idea of doing six one hour episodes changed their approach and tone in the writer's room. It gave them opportunities to try new things that they never got to do in a 22 episode format, which I can imagine. Like imagine if you're writing comic books, like kind of what Donny Cates did recently with Absolute Carnage number one. Typically you write a comic book, it's 22 pages roughly. That's about the length of a script, TV script, you know, 20, 25 pages or so um, for an episode. And then you do a, you know, 60 page uh, episode or a 60 page comic book. Uh, that's what we're talking about here. And that does change how you think of the story, how you format things, how you work out the beats and stuff. And uh, that's fantastic. Hearing that, you know, that level of work going into it is, it gets me more excited. So six movies. I'm so pumped for this. Um, Kevin added that uh, when we were putting this together, the production crews asked, how much stuff were we going to put in each episode? Because it was so epic. There's not really any small villains. This is huge. This is the biggest thing we've ever done. And I like that line too. He said, there's no small villains. So it, it sounds like it's mostly focused on symbiotes or symbiote related things or Venom itself, himself. And that's it. Like it's, it sounds like it's going to be full pedal to the metal storytelling, which I love. You guys know, I talk about that all the time. Um, so hearing that is makes me even more amped for this and is getting my, you know, and <laughs> just getting my fan, fan nerding on. Like I'm just, I'm blowing up here, man. I'm, I'm I can't even speak. Uh, I'm, I'm just so excited for this. And, uh, you know, Kurt does explain, because I mean, I'm thinking about this. I'm like, I've never had in my whole life in the 30 years of Venom, we've never had a Venom cartoon series. And this will probably be the closest we get. I mean, I would love for one day they announce Venom the series. Um, I would love that more than anything, like a, a 20 episode cartoon series focusing on Eddie Brock. I think Sony needs to get on that immediately. Um, but yeah, I think that would be a, a fantastic, or Disney, whoever is, you know, has the TV uh, cartoon rights for it. But yeah, I, I that would blow me away. Um, but this is, the best we got right now and that's why i'm so excited too is because i'm like wow i get to watch venom on tv uh weekly not like he gets two episodes in one season of spider-man no he's the focus of the whole season and that's you know what i've wanted since i was like 10 years old uh or 15 what was it 14 maybe when the animated the 90s cartoon started i think i was around 13 or 14 so yeah i mean uh yeah that's uh that's a long time waiting for something like this so yeah forgive me for being like super excited for it um Kurt explains that the story culminates threads from all three, uh, Kurt, Kurt, I'm sorry, Court Lane, uh, explained that this story culminates threads from all three Guardians of the Galaxy seasons and the first two seasons of Spider-Man. So a full symbiote invasion of our planet is what he said. So that's what the storyline is. It's symbiotes coming to Earth, full-on invasion. Uh, they're going to take over most of Marvel's heroes. Uh, so Iron Man's going to get a symbiote, Hulk, Captain Marvel, Thor, a lot of these characters are going to get symbiotes. Uh, they showed some of the artwork. It looked amazing. Obviously, I can't show any of that here. Uh, I didn't actually even get pictures of it or anything like that, but I'm sure they're going to release that to the you know, public at some point down the line, and when they do, we'll cover it here on the show. I think some, I think Venom site got some exclusive images at some point like a month or two ago, um, so yeah, definitely check them out. I'll put a link to Venom site down below, and you can check out their things, because I think those were given to them as exclusives, so obviously I don't want to share their exclusives. I want to send you guys to uh, give those guys some love, and speaking of Venom site, make sure you keep a close eye on them, because uh, you know, you may see a crossover at some point very soon with me and them, which I'm very excited for. Um, so then we have uh, starting spring of 2020 on Disney XD. Um, you know, that's when the show's going to come out. There's more stuff, more previews 
uh, more stuff to preview over the next several months for the show. So they're going to release things slowly but surely, but we're going to get more things. They don't want to promote it too much, I'm guessing, because obviously season two of the show is still going on now, and that's got to wrap up first by this, like the, by Christmas, I think, of this year, and then next year we're probably going to get a lot of stuff. So yeah, but they said, don't worry, over the next you know several months leading up to the show, we're going to get some things. Even they said, we're going to get some supporting content that'll lead up to it. That makes me really excited because I don't know if that means shorts, like short episodes, or if we're going to get a comic book series or something like that. I don't know. Whatever it is, uh, you know, I, I'm going to buy it and talk to you guys about it for sure. Uh, so there looks like there's going to be some kind of supporting content leading up to this release. So I'm jazzed about that. I don't know what that means exactly, but uh, hopefully it means something like along the lines of what I said, like shorts or comics or something like that. Um, and then you will also see other symbiotes. Uh, fan favorites maybe even, but they didn't say which ones. So not just heroes that are, you know, possessed by a symbiote or get their own symbiote. You're also going to see other symbiotes that have names and that have backstories in the comics. Um, and that's what I'm taking their quote as. Uh, so, you know, if I'm getting that wrong, you know, forgive me. But they said you will see other symbiotes for sure on the show. And they did specify that they don't mean just venomized heroes. They mean other symbiotes. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed for, you know, you Lasher fans, you Scream fans, you Riot fans, you know, Phage, Agony, um, you know, all those characters, uh, Toxin, whatever. Whatever. Um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed for all of you guys. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure some of you know fans out there. I think Donnie Cates worked on this series uh, as a writer, so I don't know for sure, but um, I think I saw him tweet that at some point like a couple months ago. So if that's the case, you know, maybe they're going to squeeze Nolan. We have no idea. Um, but definitely keep an eye out for other symbiotes. Um, and then Kevin did uh, end with by saying, like, this is a season worth. Uh, season worth of Venom stories that you've never seen. So it's a whole season full of Venom stories that we haven't seen in print, in comics, on TV, or in the movie before. Uh, it's not that same story over and over. Uh, it's them approaching symbiotes in a very new way. And then Kevin even went on to say, if you love Venom, there's no better place to be than watching our show. And then Court ended by saying, and there's no place to hide. <laughs> if you're a fan of Venom, there's no place to hide. Um, so I love that. So these guys are clearly having a lot of fun. And I had a blast listening to him. It was fantastic. And like I said, the panel was great. Uh, Catherine, Ben, May, like uh, Chris, Kevin, Court, they were all amazing people. Uh, very fantastic. I've, now I'm following all of them on uh, Instagram and Twitter. And some of them even follow me back, which is such an honor. It's super nice of them uh, to do that because obviously I'm just a dude <laughs> like who just loves Venom maybe way too much. So it's it's nice of them to, uh, you know, to put their toe in that water and follow us and hopefully get them to watch the show because, um, you know, I, the way I do things here is, is not like other YouTubers. Uh, at least I feel like they I feel like there's a lot of negativity uh, in, in a lot of fandoms in, in YouTube, and I really try to keep things positive. And if I am negative on something, I try to be uh, constructive about it. I try to explain why I'm not on the same page as everybody else as far as liking something. Um, so, you know, I always try to back up what I, you know, my opinions with stuff, but I always love hearing yours. And trust me, a lot of you guys, you do agree, disagree with me on a lot of things. And so I like that. I, that's okay. That's allowed here. Um, you know, I, I appreciate the back and forth because I think that helps us understand this character and why people see the appeal in him and what makes him special to each of us. I think that's that should be the focus of any fandom, not to divide each other, but to learn from each other. Um, so, you know, the panel ended and, you know, they were asking questions in the audience and someone went up and asked a question about other symbiotes. So that's where we got that information from where someone said, yeah, or like Court said, yeah, you may see some other symbiotes, uh, but we can't say which ones. Uh, so then it came up to me. I, like I said, I sat near a microphone. I said, just in case, if I get the courage, I'll jump up and ask a question. And then I, I said, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do it. So there was no one in line on my side. So I just jumped up and I said, all right, I'll, I'll ask a question. And my question was, because earlier someone asked, who's your favorite Marvel character? You know, who do you identify with more, connect with more? And, uh, and I, so I got up and I said, look, I'm going to answer that person's question and say, I love Eddie Brock. And I had the Venom shirt on from the Venom movie. And I had like a Venom pin on my backpack on my shoulder. Um, and I was really all decked out in Venom stuff. And I was like, Hey, look, I, you know, I love Eddie Brock. And, uh, mainly because, you know, cause I, I, I had all these questions ready for, for, uh, you know, Kevin and Chris, but then I said, you know, let's just ask one question. And maybe it, it might lead to a spoiler answer, but knowing them, you know, knowing how panels work, I'm like, yeah, if I ask something that might lead to a spoiler, they'll just not answer with spoilers. They'll, you know, these guys are professionals. They know how to work around questions. Um, so, uh, so I was like, yeah, just give it a try. But what I loved is that my question 
and got them all to tell me their version of Eddie Brock or like what they like about Eddie Brock. And that I think is great. I wish I could share the audio with you guys uh, because hearing it from them was it, as a Venom fan, it like really was nice to hear how much these you know people cared about the character so much. Uh, so, uh, you know, I said, hey, I love Eddie Brock mainly because he wants he's a guy who wants to do the right thing. But like a lot of us, I feel like he's just really bad at it. Uh, so I might. So I was like, how does a guy like that? How is he okay with leading an alien invasion or does he have some regret or conflict as the story goes on? And they said, Hey, well, we obviously, you know, Kevin said, we can't get into that because it might lead into spoilers. We don't want to accidentally slip and say something story related. He goes, but that's a very good question. Um, he goes, but we did have discussions like that going into season two because Eddie Brock had not shown up on the show at that point, And they already knew that uh, that they or they already went big and gave some backstory for the symbiotes before they even got to Eddie Brock. So uh, so they you know they were like all right well now we got to establish Eddie Brock after we've already established a symbiote. And so then Chris added yeah the idea that Eddie Brock has a personal problem in our show with Peter Parker and that Venom has a personal problem with Spider Man when they finally joined in season two it's you know clear that they hate all of Spider-Man and all of Peter. So basically it, it, that almost reminds me a little bit of um, the Spider-Man three movie with uh, Sam Raimi, where it's like, you know, Eddie Brock did kind of hate Peter and uh, the suit hated Spider-Man, obviously who is Peter. And then when Eddie and him come together. So whereas in the comics, it's a little different. Uh, Eddie doesn't really know Peter Parker that well. Uh, he just know Peter Parker's story that broke with the photos uh, is what got him fired. So he kind of hated you know, Peter, but not in a direct way. Like, I mean, in, in a direct way, but not like personal, like he didn't know Peter Parker. Um, so yeah, so it's a little different in the comics, but in the show, that's kind of the, the approach they had. So it's like, oh, okay, that's kind of like Spider-Man three. Uh, but then Kevin confirmed, uh, you know, Ben had to play both Eddie and Venom. Uh, so some people can go deep and do Venom voices, but Venom or but Ben also had to play a regular dude who worked at the Bugle and his life just spirals out of control when he becomes Venom. Uh, and he goes, finding someone with that kind of range is hard. But in his opinion, Kevin said, Ben just killed it. And, you know, so Ben was like, hey, thanks for, you know, for the compliment, obviously. And he goes, uh, he goes, but then Ben chimed in and said, uh, there was that moment at the end of episode 207 after they blast the symbiote off of Eddie in that last moment in the gymnasium when he looks at the suit and he's reaching out to it and he says, I'm nothing without you. And his hands like reaching towards the symbiote. And uh, Ben said that showed to him uh, the side of Eddie Brock that reaches for things like power or reaches for more importantly, recognition, because those are things that, uh, you know, he's chasing after in his real life because he doesn't have those in his real life. And we talked about that. Like we broke down Eddie Brock way back when we started the show and people said, you can't do Venom without Spider-Man. And I said, yes, you can. And here's why, because the motivation you need for, for Venom is just that his life needs to be ruined by one person. And, uh, and that person also needs to be, uh, have caused some kind of pain or harm to the symbiote. And if you can come up with that story, then you pretty much got Venom's origin true just without Peter Parker. And that's what they do. They do that with the Life Foundation. The Life Foundation experiments on the symbiotes in the movie. And then they, you know, that symbiote ends up on Eddie and Eddie's life has already been ruined and he's got fired and his, you know, the, his potential, you know, love, you know, his love life gets ruined. Uh, the woman he's going to marry, you know, leaves him uh, and Anne Wang. And this is all because of Carlton Drake's actions and in, in what he does. So yeah, they have a common enemy. So to me, that, is the origin of Eddie Brock. It's just not with Peter Parker. Um, and I know people hate when I say that, but it's like, hey, that's the, that's what, when you boil things down from a character standpoint, that's what it boils down to. And that's what Eddie Brock is. He, he's someone who's been wronged in a way by the world when he was trying to do something he thought was right. Um, and so, uh, and then he, you know, just takes it extra hard and extra personally um, and, and goes to the extreme with it. Um, so, uh, so I liked hearing Ben say that. And he said, you know, uh, Eddie doesn't have recognition in his own life. He does feel ignored. He does feel, you know, um, unwanted and, and unconnected to people. And uh, he's jealous of Peter because, je you know, Peter seems to have that kind of stuff as he learns more about Peter Parker. And so it, it builds in him and it builds a hatred in him. And, uh, and so, you know, then Ben went on to say that, as Kevin said, when Eddie and the suit bond, the suit has found its perfect host post Peter. And when the suit feels Eddie's hate towards the world, they make a lethal combo together with a common goal now. So that's, yeah, that's pretty much Venom right there. And they're doing it with Spider-Man in the show where, uh, you know, they, even though they introduced Eddie, 
you know, much later after Ultimate Spider-Man and after all this other stuff, you know, when they had Flash Thompson and they, you know, had other versions of Venom and Anti-Venom and stuff. Now they've started to bring in, they explained symbiotes to an extent in the other seasons. Now they actually brought in Flash Thompson and, uh, and Flash Thompson, I ran out Flash Thompson. They now f- finally bring in Eddie Brock and they were like, we have to explain who this guy is and we have to build a story with him because now he's going to be the perfect host for the symbiote. And that's the story they're going with. And uh, they're building that up in season two and they're going to lead that right into season three with Maximum Venom next year. So uh, this hearing all this was really cool and hearing all these people give me their answers was fantastic. It was great to hear uh, that they do have a deep love for this character and it makes me really feel good about the people working on the show because up until like two weeks ago i had no idea who was doing this show i had no idea at all and now you know i'm able to message them and it's 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 what a great world to, that we live in sometimes uh because uh I, that it makes my day to just connect with other venom fans and these venom fans just happen to be venom fans that are writing and producing stories with them on tv which is just the height of cool to me man um uh, so court then you know added at the end uh to your point seek the one thing, because like I said, I, we heard from Ben, we heard from uh, Kevin and Chris, and now Court was like, you know what, I'm going to say something about Eddie Brock as well. So yeah, it was like a good five minutes of them talking, answering my question. It was just like, just, it lit me up, man. I was, I was, on, I was on cloud nine with these guys. Um, Court said, uh, to your point, Seek, the one thing about Eddie that I love is that he is an extreme version of Peter Parker, which is the idea that to be a hero requires all this sacrifice and all this pain, and yet Peter still puts on the suit even though he's already given up so much to, to do it, he's still moving forward with it. But with Eddie, that becomes more extreme and dark. Uh, that sacrifice he makes, so he, uh, you know, th- that sacrifice he makes is so extreme and dark now, uh, you know, compared to Peter's sacrifice. So he rides this line of darkness because of that. And then Court concluded by saying that idea that heroism isn't easy, that it's not about glory, it requires a level of sacrifice that Venom, the character, is sort of the dark, twisted side of how that makes you feel. And when he said that, I don't know, there was something, it, it, it like set off a light bulb, like a, like a black light bulb maybe <laughs> in my head of, of just like uh, the potential for stories with that kind of approach um, where like you, you look at how does heroism make you feel when you do the right thing? How does that make you feel? Especially the times where you do something heroic and it's not easy. Um, you know, cause I, I'd like to believe that all of us, if people listen to the show, you've all done good deeds. I'm sure you have. And, uh, and you know, how does that make you feel? How do those moments make you feel when you actually feel like you did the right thing you, and you didn't do it for the glory of it. You didn't do it because it was, it was easy for you. You did it because it needed to be done. You, you had to do it. And, uh, and it does sometimes it comes at a cost and so to hear that for peter the cost is like maybe what an average person deals with when it comes to the cost you know magnified by superhero you know antics or whatever but then you hear that you know according to court uh lane here he says you know but venom is the dark twisted side of how that makes you feel so you take that good feeling and you corrupt it a little bit and that's kind of like how he views like, you know, I guess in his words here, but maybe me paraphrasing a bit, how he kind of views Eddie Brock as a character is, is that feeling corrupted slightly. Uh, and that, and that's what separates him from Peter Parker. And I, I don't know. I love hearing, I love hearing people talk about Venom. I think that's just what it is. I wish there was other Venom shows out there. I mean, I listen to, uh, the Venom Maniacs podcast from the Venom site, obviously, but I really do. And I, you know, that there was more and more Venom people out there just sharing how they feel about the character because, I just, I could hear it all day, man. I, I could literally just hear all of you tell me your version in your own shows about Venom. And uh, that, oh God, I could listen to that all day. Uh, that's how much I love this character. And I, I like hearing other people's versions of him and what they see in him. Like for me, he's, that's what he always is to me. Like I said at the beginning of this, uh, my question was, he's a guy who, who does have this like, you know, this need to do the right thing. But that compass, man, that compass inside of us all, uh, his is just never really pointing north, you know, and uh, and it's not always his fault. And that's what makes him so appealing to me and tragic. I mean, we talk about how like what drew me to want to do this character as a show, too, was the, how modern it feels. You know, if you, you look at social media and you have someone out there who 
uh, gets their facts wrong or they, they plagiarize something like that kid at IGN or whatever from from last year or earlier this year. Um, there's like these people out there that, that screw up and they're in the spotlight and they screw up big time and they, and they take they try to cut a corner and it, and, it, and it blows up in their face and then social media mobs come after them. I, that's what I keep thinking about when I think of Eddie Brock is I think about a guy who who was on top at some point had his little blue check mark on Twitter and then a mob came after him because he screwed up a story he got facts wrong or whatever and his life gets ruined and maybe somebody doxed him and 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 his you know and it, it, it ruined his love life and it ruined his relationships with his friends and, and, and made him crumble and it led him down into depression and then you take that person who fell down all those flights of stairs and then you give him an alien symbiote from another planet. Um, th obviously, that's the comic book angle. That's taking the reality angle and then adding a comic book layer on top of it, and uh, and then and then telling your story. And and he, you know when I think about that, it just makes Eddie to me just so relatable on so many levels, and in a, in a in a scary way because none of us obviously want to go through that. We all like to think that we're doing the right thing or we're doing the best we can, and we hope it never leads to people screaming and you know, hoping for our heads on a stick and, you know, and coming after us and attacking us at our jobs. And we hope that never happens to any of us, but it did to Eddie Brock. And so how does a guy like that climb back up? And the crutch he uses to climb back up is this alien symbiote from another planet. It, it's just deeply fascinating to me. I don't know. I could talk about that all day, but obviously I've talked about uh, that enough and I've talked about Venom enough for one episode at least. Um, this is more of a podcasty type episode. So, you know, I didn't have a, a ton to show you guys, not, not a lot of visuals. So I hope that you're okay with that. Um, I did my best. I just felt like, you know what, I'm just going to talk and rant and get these quotes down and get this information out to you guys and just make it just like my typical, you know, long winded kind of discussion. Uh, but I did want to kind of make this a little podcasty at the same time because I just had a lot to say and there was a lot of information to go over and I had a lot of feelings about the information. And, you know, that's what I do on the show. It's the Venom vlog. So it's about me vlogging about my life, telling you how I feel and tying it into Venom somehow. And then also vice versa, telling a Venom story and tying it into me somehow. So uh, that's that's what we do on the show. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, hopefully if you're listening to this on your way to work, you found it enjoyable. And if you're some of you, I know draw while you listen to me. And that, that means a lot to me. Uh, keep drawing, keep creating out there, keep doing your thing. And, uh, you know, always try your best, man. That's the, the point of Eddie. And uh, this show is, is to remind us that we can at least keep trying to be better, even if we fail at it. And uh, we got to help each other along the way, you know, because Eddie Brock, he needs that moral support and he doesn't always get it in the comics, but we are Venom, right? All of us, we're all fans. We are Venom together and we help each other out. So, uh, you know, so always reach out if you guys ever need anything. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this episode of anything going on in your life, anything Venom related that you love, you know, share it all down below. That's what this show is. It's a celebration and we've made it to 400 episodes and I couldn't have done it without you guys. You guys have pulled me through so many things, you know, like, you know, if Venom is like this dark, twisted version of Peter Parker and stuff, and he goes through a lot of stuff, you, you guys know about the health stuff and all the other stuff I've been through over the years. And of all the things in my life that I've tried to do creatively that clicked, it doesn't surprise me that Venom, this Venom show is the thing that clicked with people. And uh, hopefully it continues to, and we make more Venom fans out there and we meet more Venom fans. And uh, that's what we want to do. We want to keep growing, right? Uh, Cause the more there are of us, the louder we chant, we are Venom. We can drown everything else out. We can drown out all the hate and all the, all the, all the fighting that goes on in fandom. And we can just be like, no nah, man, we're Venom. That's who we are. And we don't fight with each other. Uh, we fight with carnage, maybe or Spider-Man, but we don't fight with each other. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys, as always, being here, subscribed. Uh, make sure you stay subscribed. Check out the bell notification. Click that so you get notified when new episodes come up. We'll have a lot more content coming up, but I'm going to take a few days off because i got to work and I, I haven't been feeling too well, especially after D23. You know how conventions are for me. They drain me, and I have another convention coming up with Halo soon, so you'll see some of that Halo content on my video game channel. So make sure you subscribe there, especially if you're a Halo fan. Uh, I'm going to, you know, do a tour of the whole uh, Outpost Discovery, uh, you know, con uh, Halo Con type thing that's coming up uh, in Anaheim. So yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun. So thank you guys. Thank everyone at the panel, uh, Court, Kevin, Chris, Catherine, Ben, May. Thank you all. You've converted me to fans of all of you. And I'm so excited to see what you do next, whether it's Venom related or not. I think May Cat is also doing uh, like Transformer stuff. And you guys know I'm a big Transformer fan. So uh, I'm I'm excited to know these people and, and to be able to follow them now and have some of them follow me back. It's amazing. And hopefully you'll hear their voices at some point on this show. Um, if not a video interview, maybe an audio interview with them at some point down the road. So I'll do whatever I can to make that happen because I want to share these guys with you guys because 
these folks are amazing people and they definitely uh, deserve our support. So if you can, definitely check out the show when it comes out. And if you're still on the fence about it, at least wait till my reviews come out. And I promise you, you know, as long as the shows are awesome, which I imagine they will be because it looks like a lot of hard work is being put into them, um, I will definitely hype them up for sure. Uh, you know, and, uh, and I will be honest though, as I always am about my opinions on stuff. So I might get constructive, I might get whatever, but you know me, you know how we roll on the show. I'm always going to be honest with you guys, but I still, this, the idea of a Venom cartoon basically is I can't not be excited for that. And hopefully you guys are too. So let me know your thoughts down below and we'll continue our conversation down there as always. So that's a wrap on D23, my first D23 ever. Um, I just got a Friday badge because tomorrow I got to go back to work. And plus, you know, my days of doing like multiple days at conventions, uh, E3 showed me that that's not possible anymore with my health and stuff. So I just decided just to stick to one day from now on, but I will be doing uh, two days at least at Halo uh, Outpost Discovery. So that'll be coming up on my gaming channel very soon. So make sure you're subscribed over there. Links always down below in the description box. But I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. You know, I didn't get a chance to do like a full interview with uh, the writers of the show. Obviously they're very busy, um, but I did get to ask one question at the panel and they really, you know, uh, most people at the panel answered it. So we got a lot of good information about their version of Eddie Brock. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that and thanks for watching like share subscribe all that fun stuff see you in the future peace